silver tipped. I don't shout. I don't even say the bad word. I'm too shocked. Somehow I land on the roof and brace myself on autopilot. The only thing I can see, the only thing I can focus on, is Violet falling back against the roof tiles, the harpoon sticking out of her chest. No, 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 I start yammering. Violet, no! I grab the harpoon and pull it out. There's no blood, but I put my hand on her chest and push down hard before any can start gushing. What, what are you doing? Violet looks at me, dazed. I let go, expecting my hands to come away crimson and dripping. But there's still no blood. Violet, stay calm. I can get you to Dr Thalassie. He, he can do something. They can do amazing things these days, doctors, and... Violet reaches her coat. She pulls out the blue-green volume she's dispensed by, she was dispensed by the mer monkey. Its cover is pierced with a neat triangular hole right through the second A in Malamanda. She turns it over and we see a small bulge where the harpoon nearly, but not quite, punctured through the other side. If this book had been a page shorter, says Vi staring, I wouldn't have, been able, I wouldn't have lived to finish it. I'm still holding the harpoon. I see it trembling in my hand. I look down to where Eels was standing, but the man is no longer outside his house. He's probably coming up the stairs for a closer shot, says Vi, pulling herself up. Come on! C come on where? I say. But before Violet can reply, there's a meow from the apex of the roof. Irwin! And sure enough, the cat is already sitting there, looking only slightly tousled after his encounter with the boat hook man. We manage to climb up to join Irwin, then all three of us slide down the other side. Without warning, Irwin hops over the ledge. Looking over, we are relieved to see the cat standing on a metal balcony just below. And connected to this is an old fire escape. We reach the bottom of the rusty metal steps and I'm surprised no one has called out or challenged us during our descent. Even when we scramble over a garden wall and drop into a neighbouring street in front of a startled old man and snarly dog, no one shouts. Violet scoops up Irwin and we hurry away, trying to act as normal as possible, even though my heart is rattling around my ribcage like a rubber ball and my legs feel like squids. Will we be safe? Vi gasps. In the hotel? I don't know, I say. But where else can we go? We stop to get our breath back. I think the place I most want to go right now, says Violet after a moment, is Jenny Hanover's bookshop. I nod. We should take Irwin back anyway. Thank you, Puss, says Vi, giving him a quick kiss on the head as we hurry away. I hope you didn't get hurt. Irwin closes his eyes and purrs. When we reach the Eerie Book Dispensary, I'm surprised to find it's closed and all dark inside. I rattle the door handle uselessly before slumping down on the doorstep. Stupidly, I'm still clutching the harpoon. Violet sits down beside me. Did you see, she says. Boathook man, did he really... I nod. Like a ghost, Violet continues. He came out of the tap like a ghost. I didn't think such things were possible. I shrug. If the impossible is possible anywhere, it'll be possible in Erie on Sea. Hey, that's quite good, that is. I should say it more often. And then I realised it wasn't actually me who said it at all. And it wasn't Violet. We both look at Irwin. The cat narrows his blue eyes and, at us and emits a smug purr. You heard him that time, right? says Vi to me. Herbie, please tell me you just heard Irwin say those words. I heard him, I say. Then I turn back to the cat. Oi, flea bag! You're talking to everyone now, are you? Cats don't have eyebrows, but Irwin manages to raise one at me anyway. OK, OK, I'm sorry, I say. Flea bag isn't fair. Not after you saved me <coughs> from Boat Hook Man. But I thought you only spoke to me. I thought we agreed years ago you'd keep it secret. Irwin half lowers his eyelids at me and in a bored human voice says, Meow. But the look on his face says it all. Oh no, Herbie Lemon, I didn't agree to any such thing. Then the cat climbs onto Violet's lap and purrs in exaggerated contentment as she strokes him. This town is weird, says Vi in an amazed voice. Weird, but wonderful. Weird and wonderful, yes, I say, but also dangerous. Thanks again, Irwin. I give the cat a scritch behind the ear. And how about me, Herbie, says Violet, sticking her chin out. Still not sure you can trust me? I mean, now I've been shot and nearly killed by a harpoon. Do you think I'm still in cahoots with the Sebastian Eels? I adjust my cap and nearly meet her eye. Um, I say, twiddling that very same harpoon between my fingers. Sorry about that. How could you even think it? It's just... I start... Vi, how did you know where Eels lives? Vi's chin wobbles slightly. 
Okay, she says, I suppose I haven't been completely straight with you. Oh? She folds her arms. Look, it took me a long time to pluck up the courage to leave my guardian and come here, Herbie, and I might not have come at all if Great Aunt Winnegar hadn't decided to start a new life in Tasmania. You came here from Tasmania? No, says Vi. Tasmania's on the other side of the world. If I'd gone too, it would have been years before I could have come to Erie on Sea, if ever. But I knew that if I ran away, just as we were due to leave, my guardian wouldn't bother trying to find me. She'd never risk missing her boat, and that new life she wanted would certainly be happy without me getting in the way. Erwin arches his back and rubs Violet's cheek with his head. Anyway, says Vi, it also meant that I had less time to prepare than I thought, less time to research Erie's on Sea. Almost all the information I could find was about Sebastian Eels. Eels? Yeah, he's more famous than you might realise, Herbie. My, my local library has lots of his books. Even Great Aunt Winnegar has read some. So, when I got here, I honestly thought he would be my main lead to my parents. I imagined, since my dad is an author too, that Eels would have known him and they would have been friends. It's what gave me the idea to come here in the first place. But I thought you said you came to see me, I say, though I hate the whiny tone it brings to my voice. You said you needed a detective, that you needed my lost and foundering to solve the case. You said I was famous. Oh, Herbie, I do need you. I didn't lie. It's just that I'd never met you, and the hotel sounded so strange when I read about it, and I was nervous about coming to such a grand old place. I didn't know how you'd react. So instead, when I arrived at the railway station, I asked someone the way to Sebastian Eels' house, and they told me... And they told me. Simple as that. I went there, just to look at first, but when I saw that a back window was open, I thought, well, I thought, you thought you'd start the adventure without me. Don't say it like that, says Vi with a groan. Anyway, I had a good look over the house, which I thought was empty, and found the study. I was just about to get down some serious rummaging when I realised there was someone there. Eels, I say, but Violet shakes her head and shudders. Oh, no, worse. Imagine how it felt to be in a stranger's house without permission, in the dark, and to see Boat Hook Man emerging from the shadows. It was terrifying. That's when he came to the hotel. Violet nods. I tried to lose him. I ran and I ran, but he was faster than I would have ever imagined. I couldn't shake him off. I didn't know where else to go. And that's it, I say. That's all you're keeping from me. Yes, I promise, Vi says. I should have told you sooner. I just thought you'd get the wrong idea if you knew where I'd been and what I'd been doing, and I was right, wasn't I? I say nothing. I lift my eyes to the glass tower of the Grand Nautilus Hotel, peering like an eye over the roofs and eaves of the old town. Lady Kraken can see a lot with that camera luna of hers, but seeing isn't necessarily understanding. No wonder she needs someone like me on the ground. For a moment I'm tempted to wave up at her. Then it crosses my mind to make a rude sign. In the end, though, I just get to my feet and brush the snow off my bottom. I'm starving, I say. Let's go to Seagulls for chips. We need to work out what to do next. Good idea, says Vi, standing too. Irwin strolls over to the door of the bookshop and meows, pouring the door. I'm sorry, Puss, but it's locked, says Vi, and she rattles the handle to show him. You just have to wait for Jenny to... Then she stops. We both stare open-mouthed as the door, which I swear was locked fast a moment ago, swings quietly open.